everyone, my name's Kendra and welcome back to This Cozy Space. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I cannot promise that it's going to be perfectly executed and organized, but I can definitely promise that it's going to be random and perhaps a little bit fun. I've had this idea flip-flopping in my mind for a couple of months now and it all has to do with my break from Instagram. I took a break from Instagram at the beginning of the year for a couple months, and I have a lot to say on that, but I'm gonna do a separate video about that in the future. Um, but that has sparked what we are about to start here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna call this, and I'm hoping that you give me a little bit of grace while I figure all this out, but I didn't wanna keep putting it off for fear of not knowing exactly how to execute this. And I thought, I'll fumble a little bit, and we'll kind of figure it out along the way. But what I'm wanting to do is to sit down, casually um, and just chat. There's gonna be all sorts of different random topics that we may cover, including homeschool, favorite items, books that I'm reading, moments that I've enjoyed, thoughts that I've had that have been helpful to me that may be helpful to others. The sky is the limit. There's really like nothing that I'm going to keep off the table, but I just want it to be a light, fun, enjoyable chat. Perhaps you can listen while you're getting ready in the morning or on your way to work, or you can take it in like a podcast if you like. I have a feeling these are gonna get to be a little bit longer, um, but here we go, our first one. We can do this, right? So I have on the island in front of me, just like a plethora of random things to share with you. Before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit today about homeschool. We have almost finished our first year of homeschool. I'm very excited and fired up about homeschool. I have been since I was a little, like a teenager, I would say. My nieces were homeschooled and I got to watch them go throughout that whole journey and how amazing it was and see the beautiful women they've grown into today. Um, and it was very inspiring to me. And it was really awesome to have that touch point where I could see how beautiful it could actually be versus what people that don't have experience with it, what they can sometimes think about homeschool. And as time has gone on, it has grown and changed into such a lovely thing that can be awesome for some families. It's not for everybody, but for some families. So this year, whenever we decided to jump in, it was really meant to be for a short time. Uh, but we all know I just saw the crack. I saw the crack and I was just kind of rubbing my hands <laughs> Laughing in the background. My husband was on board up until this point. We've like butt heads about this particular topic He has his opinions. I have mine. They don't really align when it comes to homeschool um, And I I love public school as well And I see the positive aspects of public school So if he felt strongly about one I didn't want to push that on him because I think there are really great things with public school also um, so I just let it be, but with everything that was going on in the world, the last little bit, um, we found a, a really great opportunity to at least for a little bit, try homeschool, but we saw such a beautiful change in our boys and it's been so wonderful for our family. There came a time when the boys were off of a wait list. We put them on a wait list to a charter school that's here local. It's a really great school. And we felt like we'll homeschool them until this charter school opens and then we'll put them in school. So they emailed us and said, okay, you're off the wait list. D did you want to accept your position? And Kent looked at me and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, mm -mm. he's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting this and I think let's do it. So we're going to take it year by year. I'm hoping like for the long haul, but you just really never know what the future holds. So I'm always like in the back of my head, know that there's a possibility that something may happen and they have to go back to public or something, you know? They've actually never been in public school. They both were with me in the private school that I worked at and it's just like a sweet little family run school. Oh, love them. And um, the first year that Weston was supposed to go to public school, he did online. So they've actually never set foot in a public school before and the school that they were in, I had my fingers and toes and everything in like every corner of their education. I was very much involved, which was perfect for me. Um, so here we are finishing out our first year and I feel like we've learned a lot. We decided to homeschool very quickly. We literally had them registered for a different public school here as well as on the wait list. Um, and then a couple nights before they were supposed to go to orientation for their uh, private school, we pulled back and that's when we kind of said we were gonna keep them on the wait list for the other school and just homeschool them up until that point. So it was a very quick, I didn't have time to research curriculum, I didn't have time to decide what I wanna do or the funds together to pay for a bunch of stuff. So we found this program called Utah Online and it's a, it's like a charter school but it's an online charter school. They provide all of the materials and the curriculum and there's like an online based aspect of it. You have a mentor that kind of works with you. 
if you need help or whatever and they do testing as well i think you can opt out of the testing but they do have that so our mentor was fabulous i loved her i just did not love the program we're not big like the boys are not watching tablet all the time or playing video games like there's a time and place for that and i just didn't love that our whole entire education was on the computer every single thing they did now last year they would they did online learning as well which i didn't love but it was just kind of what had to happen but at least cars uh, my little one his school provided materials so they were still writing and cutting and doing art projects and stuff but they were doing it while they were on zoom with their teacher this was very different it was very much like click this button click that button da, da, da. it was very repetitive i could just see their faces like glaze over and that's not what i want for my boys so I did I did a little digging and I found a program Utah man it is just the mecca of opportunities for homeschool families there's so many different programs out here there's charter schools there's Waldorf schools there's Charlotte Mason inspired co-ops there's um online like Utah online and then we have these other little companies that do this thing where you register through them you're under the umbrella of a charter school but you're in control of their curriculum so you can either access all of the materials they have and use what they have you could do a blended method where you use some of their materials and then you do some of your own homeschooling items um, or you can do what I did with the boys this last half of the year we started with them in January which is called um <laughs> custom I think it's called custom build yeah so I I pick their courses and I'm in charge for charge of selecting their curriculum and how we're gonna tackle everything um, and then they refund you so if as long as it fits in the criteria of what they're they'll fund they will reimburse you for money that you've spent how amazing how amazing there's no catch there's no like trick I remember when we first moved here and we went to some homeschool stuff I would hear families talking about this particular program and I thought, what's the catch? What's the catch? And I would see people in our local homeschool group on Facebook say, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I will help you. I'll, you know, they were being so kind, but I thought it was like, is this like some little, this is like one of those like little companies where you sign up for something and you build a team. I didn't know what it was, but there's no catch. And now since then I've had three friends that have joined, I think. And I too felt like I was trying to like group them into my team when I was telling them about it. Cause it sounds like what's the catch. Um, and so I did have to say like, there's no catch. Like I know it sounds like too good to be true, but it really is amazing. Um, we, so we got half of the amount of the money for the school year, this particular year. Cause we started with them in January and right now I'm working on submitting receipts and getting some things refunded. But here we are now getting ready for the 2022 2023 school year and i finally feel like oh like the sparkly heart eyes with the unicorns jumping out like i'm on cloud nine y'all i have been knee deep i should probably say like nose deep in researching curriculum for our little homeschool here and i just didn't have time to do it when we started earlier in the year for this particular school year so Ken has taken the boys fishing over the weekend and I have been in my library with my laptop, digging deep, looking into all sorts of different math programs. Math was really hard for me to select. I have two very different learners and I needed to find something that was cost effective but would be a great um, touch point for both of them. And language arts and history and there's just so many awesome resources out there. I just really wanted to make sure that I put the time into digging deep to figure out some things that would really nurture the boys and create a learning environment that I know that they'll really thrive in. And my boys have kind of led me to the whole Charlotte Mason approach. Now we're not uh, fully Charlotte Mason by any stretch of the me stretch of the what stretch of the imagination. Is that what it is? I don't know. Sorry something. Um, and I would say that we have Charlotte Mason, whoa, Charlotte Mason tendencies. So we love nature. We love learning through story. We love being outdoors and journaling. A lot of her things we were already doing. And my boys love to learn through uh, stories and books and experiencing and hands-on. And um, I kind of was trying to find something that I know that would be well for their, or that would work well for their learning styles. And as I was searching, I just kept seeing Charlotte Mason pop up. I've known of her, and I thought there were some really great um, elements to her um, her program and her like how she tackles stuff. But 
I didn't like fully sink into it because I just think there's so many awesome resources out there. I didn't want to like be, oh, this is me. We are only a Charlotte Mason home school. Why? Why do that? Why close yourself off to all the other opportunities out there? So I think that we're kind of leaning towards having more of that pool in our home school, but we're pulling in other things as well. I have been ordering all of our curriculum. I have many of the big subjects covered and uh, things will probably start to arrive here in the next couple weeks. So if anybody's interested in seeing a homeschool curriculum haul, I'd be happy to sit down and do an unboxing and share with you how we're tackling homeschool this upcoming school year. But I will say it's totally different than how we schooled this year and I'm so excited. So the beginning of the year after we left Utah Online, I started doing The Good and the Beautiful. I think The Good and the Beautiful is so good and beautiful for younger families that have small kids or younger kids, families that are just getting into homeschooling. Perhaps you have two parents that are working and you're still homeschooling alongside while you're trying to work. I think it's good and beautiful for certain types of categories of homeschoolers. And I think it's a great resource and many people use it as a resource. But after doing it for a little while, I was realizing it was very monotonous. It was very much open the book, do the worksheet, open the book, do the worksheet, flip the next page, do the work. It was very, they try though. I mean, it's really pretty. I love that they include art history in their curriculum. I love that for the younger ones, there's some hands-on games and things that they do try. So I think it is really awesome for what it is, but I just knew for my boys that we could do better. That's when I hit the floor running and just dove in for all the research. I texted my friend this weekend and said I had so much fun playing homeschool mama because that's what it felt like. I was just like playing house, but playing homeschool mama. So we have a really fun school year coming up. We will be schooling a little bit throughout the summer. I think we're gonna just continue to work through our good and the beautiful stuff this summer. Um, but I really just want to like dive in and get into all of our curriculum and just start it this summer, but I'm not going to do it. I want to make sure I have time to like sit with the books and look through them and see how they're laid out and learn the lessons and the teaching styles and, uh, print things and get everything ready. So I'll just work on all of that this summer. That way, whenever we are like officially starting the new year next year, we'll be ready to go. Not next year, but next school year. So that is all that I wanted to chat about for homeschool this time. We won't talk about homeschool every time. And also I'm going to try to put the little chapters at the bottom. So if you know, you're not into homeschooling or you're not into reading or whatever, you can just kind of skip a do through these videos because they are going to be kind of long. All right, let's get into some favorites. These are going to be random, but they're things I'm loving. So, um, some of you may not know, I think I talked about it on Instagram, but I'm doing this thing called the AIP protocol. It's autoimmune protocol or AIP, uh, autoimmune paleo protocol. It's to assist people who have chronic inflammation or are dealing with autoimmune diseases or disorders. Um, and I've had a ton of things going on for a couple of years and I'm tackling AIP to kind of combat some things that I've had going on. I have a feeling I have an undiagnosed autoimmune, but who knows? So things are going really good. I have gotten off one medication that I've been on now for a couple of years and could not get off and I tried so hard to get off it. Um, it took me about a month and a half with AIP and I no longer take that medication. My sleep has improved tremendously. Oh, it's going so well. That was a really big one for me. I was having awful, awful, awful sleep. Um, and I wear a watch to kind of track it so I can kind of see and being able to clean up my diet and track everything and watch my watch. I can see how my body responds when I'm eating certain things that I know with an AIP are okay, but like maybe you should have smaller amounts of. Um, I've learned that I can't eat dinner too late. If I eat dinner too late, like anytime after 6.30 or 7, I have awful sleep. It's just my body needs the time to digest the food. Um, and no sweets. I can't have any fruit even before bed because my blood sugar spikes and then my heart is like having a little party all night long. So I've kind of learned through AIP a better way to eat that better serves my body. Everybody's different, but um, it's been a really great learning lesson for me. I'm not going to speak too much on AIP because I'm not, um, I'm not like a person to talk about AIP. I did my own research. I'm using it and how it pertains to what my journey is, but my journey is different than everybody else's. But along the way, I have found some things that have been really great for me and I don't have a lot of treats per se. You can't have white sugar or brown sugar with AIP, but you can have maple, you can have coconut sugar and you can have date sugar. Um, so I do some maple, but it's like within reason. So I love a good treat. And before I started AIP, like ice cream or the occasional like gluten-free item, I've been gluten-free for several years, which 
happened when all of my eight, whatever, we don't need to talk about that, but I've been gluten-free previously, so that's not something I had to cut out with AIP. So I, but you can find gluten-free treats, like it's not hard to find. So I would love a good treat. Uh, those are harder to come by these days. I have to make everything myself if I want a treat, which is kind of awesome because it really makes you second guess making said treat. So my current favorite little uh, luxury is a parfait. How lame is that? So lame. But strawberries are delicious right now and my body handles strawberries really well. It doesn't make my blood sugar spike through the roof like some of the other fruits do. And it's a very light fruit and they're so good. They taste like candy right now. The other thing with AIP is it's really cleaned out my palate. I can really uh, hone in on certain flavors and stuff and they just have like a explosion sometimes compared to what I used to taste before I cleaned things up a bit more. I already had a pretty clean diet, but I got or even more like fine tuned. So um, I can have coconut yogurt with no sugar, no additives. Um, and so I get that. I add a little bit of sea salt, some cinnamon and some maple syrup cut up my strawberries, that's not new or exciting. But then I would love to top it with like a granola of some sort. Can't have that on AIP. So here's what I do. I found these things, they're called tiger nuts. They are a tuber. They're, uh, they grow in the ground. So it's called a tiger nut, but it is actually not a nut. So if you have nut allergies, you might wanna look into this. You can buy them whole. Um, I've made tiger nut milk before, it was delicious. Um, you can buy it in like a flour form for baking and cooking, and these are sliced. These can be toasted, but I'm lazy, so I just eat them as they are. They look like an oat. I don't know if you can see them, but they look like an oat. You can buy these on Amazon. Um, I take these with raisins, which are sugar-free, no additive raisins. Again, these taste like candy. I don't even put that much of them on there because they're so sweet, because now I can taste everything. And this is a big one for me. Um, dang coconut chips, they are dang good, y'all. They are so good. I don't love like, you know the shredded coconut that people use for baking and stuff? I don't like that like chewy, kind of hard consistency of that. This isn't what that is. These are shavings of a coconut, and then they're toasted. So they have a nice little crunch to them. Let me see if you can hear that. Ooh, no, I won't eat it, I won't eat it. So I take these, crunch them up in my hand, throw in a couple raisins and some of this, and it's like a healthy for your gut if you have inflammation or whatever, granola. You can toast all of that and it kind of brings out the flavors, but again, I'm lazy. You can get all of those things on Amazon except for these raisins. I just picked them up at our natural grocery store. Okay, along with AIP, uh, I'm cooking all of the time. Anything I eat has to be made by me pretty much. So I'm, I kind of just snack for breakfast. I don't always even eat breakfast. And then uh, lunch is like easy, like salad or soup or something. And then dinner I always make, treats I always have to make. Um, and I used to have one of these things. It's like a rectangular shape and it has a lid on it. You put like your tomato or your onion or whatever, and then you put the lid down and it chops it into cubed pieces in a little container down below. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I'll link it if I can find it. I stink and love that thing. And had we been doing this video, a video of this nature weeks ago, I probably would have shared that. I talked about it on Instagram all the time. I love it. In fact, I do miss having that particular kitchen item. But what ends up happening is it's a grid. So the items, the, the blades that cut the items that you put in there, it's in like a grid form. They're not soldered together. They're just like puzzled together. So they kept getting bent and out of place. And I was constantly, before I was using it, taking a fork and a chopstick and like MacGyvering it to get everything to work so that I could then cut my thing. I got tired of it. And then I looked at all the ones out there and I think they're all kind of made the same way and I didn't want to continuously buy this item over and over again. So I was like, there has to be something else. And here's where this friend comes in. What is it? Are you asking? I don't know. Wait till you find out. You're gonna love this. Now I will say, I'm not against that little choppy thing that I was previously talking about. If somebody knows of a brand that like they've had for years and years and they use it all the time and they love it, leave it for me in a comment down below and I will buy it because I do miss having that, but this also works really well. So it has a blade. I have the bigger version. There's a smaller one than the one I showed you. If you just have a little bit to chop, you can do that. I usually just leave it like this. And then it has a little peg at the bottom that that fits over. Then your lid goes on the top. There's no cord or anything like that. Do you see this? Hold on, I'm probably covering it. Look at that. 
you pull this and it spins it and it chops and dices whatever you want. Now they're not perfect little cubes like the other one thing, the other one that I talked about does. Um, but this has been amazing. I use it for salad dressings, which I also have to make all of my own salad dressings. Um, I love to do club soda with a little bit of sea salt. Tangent, are you guys adding sea salt to your like coffees and teas and stuff? It will change your world. You don't need a lot, just the tiniest little bit. It just punches those flavors and it just brings everything together. I, I'm telling you, just tomorrow when you're making your coffee or whatever it is you drink, little sprinkle. So when I'm making my soda drink, I do club soda, which I can have on AIP, a tiny bit of sea salt, and then uh, some maple syrup. I'll puree some strawberries in this until it's almost like a jelly consistency. Pop it in, it is so good. I make guacamole in this. I put the whole avocado, I mean, you know, like peeled and stuff. I don't chop it, I don't pre-chop it. I put that in there with cilantro and onion and garlic and the spices and then do, 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 do. And then I can just eat it out of this. I use it for everything. I think this would be really good for, um, like if you have a kid that's going to college, like a dorm situation, or if you're camping, I think this would be great to have in your camping stash. It's not that expensive. I've had this now for a few months and it's working great. I love it. Oh, 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 I have to share this. It comes with a little whip or two, which I haven't used yet, but I totally should because I do make coconut cream, like coconut whipped cream, and this would be perfect for that. Okay, on to the next thing. Um, all right, this is a tea that I love. Um, I am not drinking coffee right now. In fact, I used to have a Keurig in my kitchen. I got rid of it. It's in storage, but it's not my countertop anymore, which is a pretty big deal because I'm like a massive coffee lover. But I'm having black tea in the morning with a little coconut cream. Again, tiny bit of sea salt. It's delicious. Um, and that one, I'll link it down below. It's called a uh, Yorkshire biscuit tea. Ugh, so good. They have one that's also toast and jelly by Yorkshire. It's a black tea. It is so stinking good. But this is like my little treat tea. It's made by a company called Harney and Sons. You can find several of their teas on Amazon, also on their website. I do have other teas by them and they are all wonderful. But this has been like a current favorite for a while. I wish, I wish you can smell this. Just stick your nose in there and take a big O whiff. Just let's see if we can get some of those hints sent your way. Lavender, vanilla, citrus with black tea. Have you ever had a London Fog latte from Starbucks? That is this, but even better and more fresh tasting. So um, I'll have this in the afternoon sometimes. I do like double up on the tea bags. If you're gonna add cream and stuff to it, you need it to be a little bit stronger. So I'll do two to three tea bags just depending on how big my cup is and how I'm feeling, you know? Um, and then I take my coconut milk, I put it in my little Nespresso frother, and then I add vanilla without alcohol. You cannot have alcohol in AIP, so I have alcohol-free vanilla and cinnamon and then I put a little bit of sea salt in the tea, of course, and then it makes a delicious, delicious drink. It's so good. And look at how cute the tea canister is. So I actually keep this out on my countertop. And my morning tea, I moved into one of these because I just thought they were so pretty. So this is what my morning tea looks like, the biscuit tea. And I just, hello, we are back. My camera just shut off. It's like, girl, you are talking too much. Good night, but no. We're gonna keep going. Um, I was talking about my morning tea and I was saying that I keep these stacked like this over where my little tea tray is. So those have brought me a lot of joy. They're just pretty to look at and taste stinking delicious. Did I say I only had, did I tell you I only had one more kitchen thing left? Cause I actually have another, I have another kitchen thing. So um, we use placemats and my boys are messy when they eat and the placemats need to be wipeable and I need to be able to, I, like, I've seen fabric placemats, but you wash them and they get all wrinkled and they shrink. And then I have like woven ones for fancy occasions, but crumbs get stuck in them. I needed pretty nice, but usable placemats. So back in quarantine, when things got crazy, I invested in these really nice placemats that I love so much. And I ended up getting us, we had a Christmas set. This was like our fall winter set. And then we had a spring set. So my boys would get really excited because they get excited by sweet and simple things whenever we would go to dinner and it would be a new set because they would be like, oh, is it fall? Is it what that would like be the cue. Isn't that so funny? Um, I love these black ones. They're so pretty. These were kind of pricey. 
Uh, I think this company is still on Amazon, only I checked this print and they no longer carry it, but I just think it's classic, right? So again, these were expensive. They were a splurge, but I figured if we were using them at least once a day, over and over and over for multiple years, it was okay and it was gonna protect my table. But over time, um, I'm trying to find the worst one. They started to get chips in them. And when they would get chips in them, water as I was cleaning it or something got spilled, it kind of started seeping through. I don't know if you can see that brown circle. Um, and this happened to several, several of them. So I, they still are fine. I can still use them. Um, but I kind of started feeling like if I wanted to have them for longer, I needed something to kind of switch it up so that this wasn't our only ones that we were using. There's even some like damage around these edges. So I got on Instagram, on Instagram, I got on Amazon as you do and just wanted to find like a cheapy set just to kind of mix and match with. And I found these and I was so shocked at how nice these are. Again, those expensive, these affordable and better quality. Oh yes, look at how pretty these are. You probably hear my children upstairs. They are here. Beautiful butterflies with this deep green like matte in the background. They're thicker than the expensive ones are. Let's see if you can see. The camera is not going to focus on that. These are thicker and these are also bigger. So see this lip right here? This is, well, let me do it this way so it's more noticeable. So you can see this lip all around here and at the top. And the edges are finished nicer. So these have like a, I don't know what, what is on that edge, if it's like a paint or a stain or what. And these almost just have like a poly finish on the edge. So they, you can see on the back, they're like stained and stuff along the ed edge where they've gotten wet. So I was shocked. I kept wanting to go back with that brand because I felt like the quality was really good and I wanted them to last. But I read reviews and reviews sometimes steer you in the right direction and people were like talking about the quality of them and just saying do it. So I did it and I'm just, oh, wouldn't you love this in a picture? They're so pretty. I also ordered the coaster set too. Okay, though that is officially all of the kitchen stuff. I am gonna flip through some books just pretty quick. Um, this is getting long. These are going to be long, but that's okay. We're about to go on a picnic, so we're leaving here in about 10 minutes. Okay, books. So um, I didn't get around to sharing my favorite books of 2022, and I thought either I can come back and do a big video and share some favorites, or I can just sprinkle them in here a little bit as we do these videos. So that's kind of what I did today. I have one in particular that would have been at the top of my favorites list for 2022. Um, it's called Wizard for Hire by Albert Skye. This is a middle grade book. If you happen to be an Audible member, they have number one and number two available for auto, Audible members for free. I don't know if they have, there's a book three, but I don't know if that one's available. Anyways, we picked this up solely as a cover by, listen, whatever, because I didn't pay for it in the beginning, but um, it was Halloween and the boys and I had finished out our other read alouds we were doing for Halloween and I just needed something to get us through like that last week that was kind of whimsical and magical feeling and it said wizard so I thought all right and it's free so I didn't expect much from it. But this book, oh, it is so wonderful. Oh my gosh. It's one of the books as soon as I finished I wanted to read it again. Um, we did the audio version like I said the narrator is a amazing amazing he did such a great job giving these characters even more life than they probably already have on the pages um they have this beautiful world full of magical realism it's light but dark at the same time i laughed my boys found things humorous at their age but as an adult i found things that i thought were really funny it's sarcastic it's got dry witty humor in it um even the cover like the cover of the license plate it says magic for you and honk if you're like, honk if you need magic. And I love breakfast. This guy, he loves breakfast food. So here's the story. Without talking about it more than I already have, um, there is a little boy. His name is Ozzy, and he lives with his mom and his dad. His mom and his dad are scientists, and they discover something pretty awesome. Um, they're getting funded to continue their research, and all of a sudden that funding gets ripped out from underneath them, 
and they're told to stop their research, but that doesn't sound good to them. They want to keep going. So they take their son, Ozzy, they buy a cabin out in the middle of nowhere, um, deep in this beautiful lush green forest. And that's where they stay. They continue their research. They raise their little boy, Ozzy, out in the woods. This means that he is not around people very often besides his mom and his dad. He doesn't really know about the outside world and things that you and I may know when we're interacting and talking together. He doesn't have those things. So a lot of funny situations come from just that alone. But at some point within the story, his mom and his dad go missing and Ozzy's left to fend for himself. And his boundaries get pushed as he's having to kind of go out into the real world and interact with people in society to look for his parents. Along the way, he comes across some amazing characters. If you love found family aspects in your books, you will love this one. I know it's middle grade, but it's lush and full of so many awesome morals. And I cried, I laughed, we were cheering. It was such a great story. And it was great for my boys and also for myself as an adult. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. If you're not a reader, just at least pick up the audio and give it a try. It's really good. If you have any big like um, summer road trips coming up for your family, this would be a great listen. Then recently I got to go to Barnes and Noble. Oh, it's been a long time since I've been in that store. I had a um, gift card burning a hole in my pocket. So I got to go peruse the books and touch the books and smell the books and be with the covers of the books. It's been so, so long. I have been in bookstores, but not to one of that magnitude. And I would say most of my books come from thrift stores and online used bookstores or eBay, things like that. This one, um, Wizard for Hire, I had the audio, but I loved it. I want this to live on my shelf, so I bought the new copy from Amazon. Um, but this one, I didn't. I got it from the bookstore. And I wanted, when I was using my gift card, I wanted to not look up reviews. I just wanted to get a book because it like spoke to me and felt right in that moment. And I'm so glad that I got this one. It's different than what I typically read. But it was so good. It looks like very cheery, doesn't it? It's like pretty and cheery and it's called the Bright Side Running Club. You would think it's gonna be like light. And it is, I mean, it's funny in parts and um, there's. A, it's not as like heavy as it could be with the topic that it's about, but it's about cancer. So um, there is a, a woman, she's referred to as middle-aged and she's loving her life. She's got a great career, a great friend circle. She loves her family. And all of a sudden she is uh, knocked off her feet with this diagnosis of breast cancer as anybody would be. And she starts as this word kind of gets out around her friend group and her family that she's ill. People start to treat her differently. They treat her kind of with like kid gloves and they speak down to her a little bit. And she's had some issues at her, her, she owns a gift store and she's kind of feeling like they're not wanting her to be involved in her own store anymore. And she just feels like she's losing herself and cancer's not only taking her health away from her, but her identity as well. And she decides to fight back and she meets a girl who is also going through cancer and is very inspiring to her and together they form a group of runners and all the runners that are participating in this group are going through different walks with cancer and different uh different types of cancer and they're at different places within their journey and they have a fast friendship. They fall in love with each other quickly and they are there to support and um, just pour into each other. And so while it's also a journey with cancer and it's also the story about how it affects family and relationships and jobs, it's also the story about women pulling together and supporting each other in a beautiful way. So I hugged this book when it was done. I got teary eyed in a couple places. I do wish the characters were developed a tiny bit more. Like I just wanted more time with everybody. I think she could have like spinoff books about the characters because they're all so fun. Um, but it was so good. It was really, really good. All right. Another book I wanted to talk to you about, and this would have been on the favorites list of 2022. Um, <laughs> this book, it's very random. I think it's probably not one you would think I'd be holding up. It's I thought it was a home decor book. I got this from bookoutlet.com um, and I ordered it because it was inexpensive and I thought it was a decor book. Mm, nope, not a decor book. Um, but I started flipping through it and I was like, wait, this is actually kind of awesome. And it's all about learning uh, learning the idea behind this word, logum, which I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but it says the Swedish way of living, balance, harmony, beauty, and sufficiency. We all know uh, Huga, right? Huga is like uh, really loving the life you live and adding cozy and warmth and just kind of like hunkering in and enjoying life. This takes Huga to a different level. And it's all about kind of like finding that 
I really don't love the word balance. I'm more of like a flow kind of girl. And I think this is something we should talk about in one of these videos in the future. Um, so I'm not going to say balance, but flow, a flow to your life. Like there's an ebb and flow. It's a roller coaster. You kind of go with it when you need to, and you pull back when you need to, and just kind of listening to your body and what kind of sparks joy within your body. So, um, there's topics on how to exercise a logum way, how to have friendships a logum way to bring logum into your home. Home. and um, it's a beautiful concept so since reading this book I've gone out I've listened to some podcasts about it I have two books on my shelf that dive deep into this idea that I'm waiting to read I've passed this on to friends we now like when we're going through something we say take a logum approach you're or you're doing this in a logum way and it gives you like peace look the word up do some research if you're interested it's it's a good thing. And I think more people are going to start talking about this as time goes on and it gets out there a little bit more. But do you see all these tabs? These are from things that I loved. Do you want to, let's just pick one, shall we? Let's just pick one and we'll see what I was saying or not what I was saying. We'll see why I decided to tab that page. Okay, so fika, and this is something I actually started doing with my boys. It's something that you have in the middle of the afternoon, so it's like a snack. You usually have tea with it, and it can be accompanied by a treat of some sort if you choose. And it's about stepping away from your work day and just taking a mental break. You can take it by yourself, or you can connect with others. You're not supposed to be talking about stressful things or work. You are purposefully trying to only bring light and energy and joy into that fika moment. So the boys loved fika. We did that a lot when I first read the book, but we haven't done it as much. Um, and also it talks a lot about how logum is different for everybody. So my logum may not be your logum. You may come into my home and see that I have candles everywhere and I have mood lighting and lots of lamps and cozy textures and warm tones and you and stuff. I have, I mean, I'm definitely no minimalist. And you might think, oh, that's like too much and blah, blah, blah. But what I would say to that is that's, my logum, my logum is this brings me joy. This fits my family dynamic. This makes us happy. This is creating an environment that makes us want to live in and be in and be cozy in and make memories in. But your logum may be different. Maybe you like all white homes or you don't want books everywhere or things like that. So it's also understanding of how different we all are and appreciating everybody's different logum and their own path. So it's an amazing book. It literally changed my life. I know that sounds crazy, but it, it really did. And I'm, I'm excited to continue my logum journey. All right. We did it. We did it. We did it. We finished our first one. My battery is blinking at me. Um, stay tuned. I have so many things coming on the channel. I have a big surprise. I'm waiting to film the second part of the video, but once I get that out, um, I can share a surprise. We have a ton of adventures coming this summer that I want to take you guys on. Just stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Random. I'm not a niche channel. It's random. But if you love like homeschool and family stuff and home decor and thrifting and living a healthy lifestyle and adventuring in nature, this is your place. Okay. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye everybody. Fun.